Howdy y'all, it's Jordan Smith, chief builder and owner at Smith House Company. This is an LSL and there's several advantages that I really like about this and then there's a few disadvantages that you should be aware of if you are a builder wanting to use this and maybe if you're a homeowner using these as well. What a LSL is, is it has these strands of wood that have been chipped up off of a bigger log and then they're made into a mat and they're pressed together with a mixture of resins and waxes and as it's pressed together it builds very high density and they are very, very strong. They're also super straight. One of the biggest advantages of these is their straightness. Because they're pressed into a big mat and then cut down, you can have very, very straight um, lumber pieces in your house. And if you look down a wall, every single stud is gonna be lining up exactly with the stud next to it because our bottom plate is an LSL and our top plate is an LSL. And as long as I've got these parallel and directly over the top of each other, our walls are gonna be completely straight. We don't have to worry about any bowing either when we install it or over time. One of the things about dimensional lumber, normal lumber out of a tree, is that it usually shows up to the job site wet and it dries over time. Well, if we cut it straight when it's wet, as these boards dry over time, they're gonna cup and they're gonna bow. It's just a natural process of the lumber. Um, you don't have that with the LSLs. They come in straight and they stay straight. They don't dry out over time. So we really like that benefit of them. Also, the length that you can get them is another huge benefit. With engineered lumber, you can go up to 60 foot plus with some of these products. And so if you have a very long wall that you're wanting to have a continuous bottom and top plate with, you can do that with engineered lumber. You can't necessarily do that with a structural or a regular dimensional lumber. And the final advantage that I like about the LSL product is that it is a consistent strength. I know that all of my boards are all going to have a very uniform strength because as they manufacture these, they change the biases of this material based off real-time actual quality assurance breakage tests to make sure that every board coming out of there is meets a minimum standard. So I know that all of these meet a minimum standard through the continuous quality assurance process. We don't have that with dimensional lumber. Um, the species change, how long they've been in the forest change. There's a lot of different drawbacks that you don't know exactly what you're getting when you buy just a regular framing timber. Another problem is in the old days when we were using old growth, we had really dense, really strong wood. In today's forest, the good thing is we're planting more forest than we're harvesting now in North America. So good job there. The bad news is that these trees grow so fast that they don't they're not able to build the density and the strength that we had when we, were ha when we were harvesting out of old growth forest. So this product here can take that same fast growing tree, we chop it up and we make a very dense, hard, long lasting, durable product to where if you just took that same tree and you made it into dimensional lumber, you have the problems with dimensional stability over time and you also have an unknown on exactly how strong it is. That leads into the disadvantages of this product. First is, if you're building with it, it is super dense. It is very difficult to drive a nail through this material. You have to have big nail guns and you have to have big compressors being able to push it. Um, we, have, we have our compressor set at 140 PSI and we use our big Pazload framing nailers in order to drive our nails into here. And those guns do a great job. Smaller guns, lower pressure compressors, you won't, you'll, you'll leave it out about a quarter inch and you'll have to drive it in with a hammer. So not so much a disadvantage, it's just something to keep in mind if you're used to building with dimensional lumber. It's much harder to drive a nail into this and you have to have the equipment that can properly do it. The biggest disadvantage though of all of this is price. These are much more expensive than dimensional lumber. So you, in most home builds, in this home we're doing it all with LSLs because we're doing level five finishes, 
We have a lot of cabinet walls. We have a lot of tile features. We have shower, uh, glass shower panels that are coming right up against our walls. We want all of this house to just be spot on, perfectly straight. In most builds, you don't need all the walls to be as perfectly straight as what we did in this house. You can pick and choose where you need those super straight walls. Cabinet walls, definitely use them there. Your cabinet maker will thank you when he's installing these cabinets because everything will be completely plumb and level. Uh, tile setters are able to put their tile on without worrying about any bows. Your, your glass shower panel installers won't have to worry about a wall bowing and then their glass coming up straight up against it. You have a straight wall, straight glass, and everything works out. So pick and choose. Bathrooms are a good place to use it. Kitchens are a good place to use it. Anywhere that you have a feature wall that is a level five finish and the sun is going to come raking against that wall at a very low angle, think about using it there too because the straighter the wall is before you put your sheetrock on or your drywall on, the better it's going to be in the final product. Now, the other one, the other disadvantage that I don't know about yet, I've got a lot of comments on like, well, what about moisture? How does it respond to moisture? I don't know. I've got a test over here set up. We're about to flip these boards over and look at them. They've been sitting out for about a week in the rain and just right on the mud. And we're gonna see if they've absorbed any moisture. Um, but just from sitting out here in the framing, I've seen no detrimental effects. We got a lot of rain while this has been uncovered and I've seen no detrimental effects to it. The other point I'd like to make on that, make sure your houses don't leak. It doesn't matter whether you're using engineered wood products or you're using dimensional wood products. If your house leaks, if you are letting in water, whether that is liquid water that comes in from a rain or whether that's water vapor that is allowed to come in through air and then condense on your interior of your walls, you've got a problem. I don't care whether you're using engineered or dimensional lumber. If you let water in, if it can't dry, it's gonna die. So make sure that you get all of your waterproofing details correct. Make sure that you get all of your air sealing details correct. And then you don't have to worry about whether a dimensional lumber or engineered lumber is gonna perform better with water. You don't install these outside. You don't put them as your, your decking frame to where rain can come on it. I mean, it's inside a dry environment. So make sure you keep it inside a dry environment and you don't have to worry about it. Having said all that, we're gonna walk over here and see what happens when they actually get wet and are allowed to stay wet for a little bit. Okay, so this isn't a super scientific test. Both of these have been out for several days to a week, just laying on the ground. You can see this morning, there's moisture on both of these where they were contacting the ground. The nails on this are rusting up. So you know that they've been out for a little while, but I wanna show you a few things on this LSL you know, here's, here's the top side, the dry side. So that's, that's what it looks like. You can see it's yellowed a little bit in the sunlight, but it's very structurally sound. On this back side here, it's wet wood, so it, 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 it digs in more, but let's see if I can peel this. See, it's, it's difficult. I, I mean, there's no, there's no more, um, delamination of those strands where it's been wet and you see it, the wet the moisture only goes in a little bit so even though this has been sitting out for about a week in the in the rain and the muck it's still very structurally sound this wood here you know that's that soft wood it's wet it's not rotten hasn't been out there long enough if it, you allow it to dry it's going to be fine on the front side here you know it's the same but here's the big difference between the two. This engineered board is still completely straight. This way and this way. We've got a completely straight, line that up with you there. It's just completely straight, even though it's been sitting out face down. This board on the other hand, I don't know if y'all can see that there. You'll see that bow, you'll see how the bottom has gotten longer and it's bowing in this direction. I mean, it's a short piece, so it, you can't pick it up too much, but I can definitely see about a 16th inch bow in this direction. And then in this direction here, uh, you're not gonna be able to see it on camera. I know you're not, but there's a cup 
to it here because as these grains expand this way it bows up like that and then as these grains expand this way it cups right so you have bowing and cupping when it gets wet on one side versus the other when it dries the opposite is going to happen and in this case it's going to straighten out but if it dries more and we have some disparity between our grain growth on one side of the board versus the other you can get cupping and you can get bowing as it dries after you've already built your house so you build your house you put all your finishes in and this stuff starts moving on you causing little cracks in the drywall We've been building houses out of this forever. I'm not saying everybody should do LSL only on all their builds. I'm just saying, think about it when you're doing some high-end finishes in certain, in certain places. This may not be good enough, and this may give you what you're looking for from a long-term stability standpoint. And from a moisture standpoint, we'll just have to do longer-term tests and see. I'll put a couple of pieces out here in the, uh, in the field tell people not to touch them and we'll come back in a few months and see how they're doing. Thanks so much for watching. Comment below. Do you love engineered wood? Do you hate engineered wood? Do you love puppies? Do you hate puppies? Subscribe if we've earned it. Go follow us over at Instagram at Jordan Smith Builds at Smith House Co. And we'll see you next time on Smith House.